Mr. Yair Lapid, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I want to uh, point out uh, recent comments from the Prime Minister, Netanyahu, will not definitively rule out a third round of elections if again he gets the mandate and does not form a coalition. He, he won't clearly say that's not going to happen. Are you committed, how committed are you, to doing whatever it takes to avoiding a third round of elections? Well, I would say everything possible but entering Netanyahu's government. We will not sit in Netanyahu's government under no circumstances. Uh, this is something all four of us, the four leaders of Kahol Lavan, has uh, declared. And this, we're going to keep our word because we are men of our word, or men and women of our word. And uh, uh, so we're not going to enter his government. So if you, you don't want a, a third election, you will have to vote Kahol Lavan. But, but, I mean, it seems then there's a... We're stuck. We're stuck in April. We may be stuck again now. Would you consider, at least consider perhaps, backing a government where Netanyahu can stay after the terms of, prime, of, of premiership from Benny Gantz, then Yair Lapid, then after a few years, Netanyahu can serve some sort of creative solution to avoid a third election, maybe there could be a government of three premiers. It's interesting, Jeff, when you are in politics, I've been in politics now for eight years. So each and every time somebody finds a word, you just use creativity as the word, in order to describe to you why is it that you have decided to lie to your voters. So I made the decision not to lie to my voters instead of seeking for uh, uh, creative ways of, of uh, lying. No, we're not going to sit with him in the government because he had three indictments, very uh, tough, hard uh, uh, indictments. and. He needs to go and deal with these issues. And besides, being in office for 13 years is just too long. It's not for the good of the country. And the reason we're doing what they're doing is because we're here for the good of the that country. That means we could be looking at a third election. We could be. I hope not. It's up to the voters. It's up for their ability to see whether they want change or stagnation in Israel in the coming years. But let's imagine, uh, Mr. Lapid, that we're stuck again. And more than one million voters give their trust to Prime Minister Netanyahu after 10 consecutive years, let's imagine. And according to the law, he can run as Prime Minister. I mean, he's not, I mean, this is not a coup. You say, I do not want to lie to my voters. But I think that your voters, and you feel the Israeli people, you are a very good journalist, and you feel the, the street, do not want a third round. So for that, wouldn't you make this effort? No. I think uh, what is now standing between us and a unity government that is what that what is desired by the majority of Israelis is one person that had three indictments. So the responsible, sensible, logical thing to do is for that one person to step aside or to step down and make room for a more uh, uh, for sanity for for uh, Israeli politics to move forward for the country to move forward. One person is what stands between us and a unity government, which they could. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, what we want here is to say yes to Likud, no to Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. But you saw that we had elections only in April, and in April, I mean, he, he won the elections. I, I, well, so he didn't win the election. The secret. No, was, he, he didn't win it. the election. He had 35 seats. He actually had 34 seats, mm -hmm. and we had 35 seats. So okay. if we're talking in terms of winning and losing, we won the election. He couldn't form a government. We couldn't form a government. This is why we're stuck where we are now. And what we need to do is make sure that the one person who's stopping us from having a government will step down. Do you think, perhaps, given Netanyahu's, in recent interviews, refusal to clearly say, I will return the mandate, I will give Benny Gantz and Blue and White a, a chance if I can't fail, if you are tied again, which is a possibility, even if you are one or two seats behind, do you think you should still get the mandate first because you will try, you would give, return the mandate and not go to third elections, even if you're a bit smaller? Should you get the mandate first? Well, we should have even before, even after the April election. This, is, this election is not even a new election. It's overtime. It's, it's an extension of the April election. And what was supposed to happen is for us to be able to try at least to form a government. Instead, what Netanyahu did was going to a new election. It's his initiative. I think it was the wrong one. And I think uh, in politics, you're supposed to pay for your wrongdoings. Mm -hmm. But in our poll, you know, we saw a poll, the Israeli I-24 poll, and the majority of Israelis 
are conservative, you see that, and they want a conservative or right-wing government. Now, I look at the blocks, the two blocks, and I look at you, blue and white, and you say, we're not a lefty party, yet I see in your block, I mean, your allies. Your allies are what? Your allies are the left-wing parties. Well, that's that's something you put on the screen, not I. I, I am, you know what, there is, there is it's, it's, it's an interesting debate yeah. to be probably discussed after the election because it's too complicated and even philosophical. We'll have it, have your because, <laughs> yeah, because it's, there is a difference between conservative and right-wing. Mm -hmm. I don't think the people of Otsma Yudit are conservative. I don't think Smutrich is conservative. I don't think Litzman is conservative. They are either ultra-orthodox or just extremists. I think they're giving a bad rap to conservatism. Conservatism is about being able to work with other people for the good of the country. It's about being a patriot. Those people, to me, are not patriots. I don't think uh, Itamar ben who has in his living room a big picture of Bauch uh, Goldstein, the killer, the murderer, the assassin, is, 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 a, is an Israeli patriot. So, and I don't think he's a, he's a conservative. If anything, he's an anarchist. So on that point, I mean, tr finding common ground for the good of the country, working with patriots. You mentioned Smotrich. Do you, have, do you see a possibility of working with Yamina in the next government? This includes people like Bennett, who you've worked with before, mm -hmm. but also people like Smotrich, who, I mean, you may have to work oh, with them. Could you work the, with Smotrich? The, there is a distinction between uh, uh, Bennett and uh, Elet Shaked and Smotrich. This is not even the same party. They they're, they're, they're staying together. You work, well, you work with them we, all. We will you see. Know, you can be specific. Your, your idea, for example, on Judea and Samaria, your idea on, uh, your opinion on Jerusalem, for example. Well, I think, well, there's no real, no, but no, Israel, no responsible Israeli leader will now comment on the future of the negotiation before Trump puts, President Trump puts the, uh, the deal of the century on the table. He announced he will do it just after the election. So I but think. We saw the tweet of Yamina this morning, for example, very much worried about the Trump's deal. So are you also I, worried I, on I, the country? I don't, I don't really. I mean, you're not uh, really right happy. now in, in this part, in this timing in the election. Thirty-four you have to, hours. Yeah, to, you to have to open. possess the ability to be ubiquitous. But and then again, <laughs> I, I I didn't have a chance to follow to, uh, Yamina's tweets. Yeah. So everybody everybody is concerned, worried anxious, curious to see what kind of, of uh, a deal will President Trump put on the table, and therefore no one will comment right now on the future of the negotiation. When it comes to the 67 lines, Benny Gantz, other Blue and White Party leaders have said repeatedly that no peace talks on the 67 of lines. Not. So if you're behind that commitment, how can you expect to work with the Merits Party or with, with Labor if that's a firm commitment? How could you bring them on, on, on board? Well. In politics, you understand that you're going to work with people who do not completely agree with you 100%. This is part of politics. I mean, if we have 61 seats, if Kaholovan will have 61 seats, a lot of problems will be solved. I can hope, but it doesn't seem like it's, this is what's going to happen. So I just said to you, yes to Likud, no to Netanyahu. Working with Likud as well will have to do with compromises, and this is what you do when you're in government, and when you have a coalition, a system like ours, in which you have to form no, a but coalition. But you want them to maybe be, be a little amenable and be able to, to work with you on the 67 lines? Oh, well, so what about you being more Jeff, this open is for negotiations? The larger Kahol Avan is going to be, the closer to our pl platform the policy of the, the government will be. This, this is as simple as this. Kaholavan government, for example, let's imagine, I mean, Benny Gantz, uh, Prime Minister, rotation after two years, it's about after two years, mm. two years. It's you, for example, years. Minister of what, of uh, Foreign, Foreign Affairs? Minister. Foreign Minister. By the way, you can be that also under Netanyahu, I think. I, he, I was offered that, but I don't want to sit in Netanyahu's government and because he has three times. I try, I try to imagine this government, uh, uh, Arab-Israelis ministers, Probable, plausible? Not from the uh, United List, because they are non-Zionist, and they have within them uh, people like the people of Balad, who, who just say they don't want a Jewish state, and the whole concept of a Jewish democratic state is strange to them, so we can't sit with them, because I'm a Zionist, and I'm a Jew, and I want to live in a Jewish state. Mm -hmm. I want to get your reaction. Uh, I know you haven't had time to look at Yamina's tweets, but your own tweet um, from a few hours ago on the ultra-Orthodox, on yes. the Haredi issue, referencing an op-ed from a few years ago where they... They refer to you as Hitler. A few days ago at a Shas rally, uh, a prominent rabbi said that you should go to hell with your father. This is the yes. kind of rhetoric. I want to get your response, I mean, to the ultra-Orthodox. Today, you actually, you don't have to go that far back. Today, there was a big rally in Jerusalem, and Gaffney went on stage and called me Amalek. Amalek, if you, if you know your Bible, it means you should kill me, not only me, but also my children. But there any no possibility, then, of, of repairing the... the 
relationship with the ultra orthodox in, in another in, in a way to mend the fences to bring them into a government? Have you pushed blue and white yeah, but you too far? Ask it also in a different way, campaigning for a secular government. Don't you a little bit exaggerate? I mean, Judaism no, it's, is it's, not a it's bad not, word. Well, first of all. Uh, uh, the ultra-orthodox are doing something interesting. They are calling me Hitler and then they shout incitement, incitement, hatred, hatred. I never spoke about them in any language that is even close to that. I, I was always polite to them because I think being, I, I really think I'm old-fashioned this way. I think, you know, being polite You're has polite, to, but the exclusionary. But I don't think there's an exclusion there. In politics, sometimes you're in the coalition and sometimes in the, you're in the oppos opposition. If, if they lose the election, they will go to the opposition. I, I agree. This is what I want. They will go to, and this is not. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not. In, 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 there's no inclusion there. If you're going, this is what. I, listen. Four years ago, we lost the election. I went to the opposition. I didn't say somebody's disqualifying me. I didn't say it was something wrong with it. This is the nature of politics. If they will lose the election, they will go to the opposition. Fair and square. Right, we're almost out of time, Bose. Quick question. A final quick word from Mr. Yair Lapid. The only thing I'm listening to. Um, yeah, Lapid, and I'm thinking so. No Likud as a partner. Uh, of course, Likud as a partner. Ah, that's interesting. Of course, Likud. I said yes to Likud, no to Bibi. But you believe in democracy. Netanyahu was a chosen leader well, you know of the what? Likud party. You know you, what? Do you want to choose for let, the Likud? Let me tell you something. Uh, um, Yamina has chose. Uh, chosen uh, Ayala Chaked. Netanyahu did everything in his power in, to mm -hmm. interfere in Yamina. He did everything in his power to interfere with us. But you're doing, but you're doing the same. So I'm, I'm telling Likud, the Likud people, and you know what? Since the Likud people are talking to you at night and they're talking to me at night, they, you understand we started the conversation with this. They're not going to let Netanyahu drag them into a third election just because he has legal issues. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let him. So, uh, I mean, the, the seed of the revolution is already there. They're just just waiting for this uh, uh, election to be over. Mm -hmm. right. we'll have to now because they talk to me at night, they talk to Mr. Lapid at no night. Do they say the same thing to me? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I think, but I think they're saying similar things, especially about Netanyahu and his real motives. All right, we'll have to leave it here. Mr. Yair Lapid, thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. Thank you for to, having to, me. To, and Boaz, it's been a pleasure the last few weeks, my friend, to be with you in studio. Speaking to react or no? We, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a possibility. This, but we commit suicide live? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you think that <laughs> was that when Jeff was talking about Anchorman in television that moved into <laughs> politics, he was trying to hint no, on no, anything. Whatever it takes to avoid a third election. That's what that one. All right, Boaz, thank you so much. And that is it. Thank you for being with us from around the world here on the i for News Israel election show. Stay tuned right here for extended coverage all week long on the channel. See you soon.